Namaste. So last time we were talking about the Vedic scale. And this time we're going to talk about the Vedic intervals, swara. Now, swara are different from Western intervals. The interval is a distance between two notes sounded simultaneously, right? And this is the key to both the expressive and healing powers of Vedic music. So we're going to go into this in a little detail. Let's revisit from the last video the diagram showing the harmonic series. Here's the harmonic series, and here is how it sounds. Now the difference between the notes of the harmonic series are the primary intervals of the Vedic scale. And they are given above the staff, octave, fifth, fourth, major, third, minor, third, and second. So these intervals become the uh, swaras, sa, pa, sa, ga, pa, ni, sa then those intervals are used to create the scale. Now, the interesting thing here is the frequency relationships are integral. In other words, they're made up of whole numbers. An octave is two times the frequency of the lower note. The fifth is three over two times the frequency of the lower note. The fourth is 4 over 3, and so on. So, because of these whole number ratios, Vedic music has an interlocking network of vibrations. And the network forms sacred geometrical figures that remain stable in the room around the performer. Now, this is very, very important for the healing powers of Vedic music. Western music, on the other hand, is based on a mathematical imagination. <laughs> they can say, okay, we want to get an octave which has exactly 12 notes in it. Look at the piano keyboard. There are 12 notes in every octave. So... Let's just make each of these half steps the same ratio. And what is that ratio? The lower frequency times the twelfth root of two. So if we multiply the lower frequency times the twelfth root of two twelve times, then we get an octave. But the twelfth root of two is an irrational number. <laughs> It never reaches the end. It's like pi. It just keeps going and going without any end. So the twelfth root of two is irrational, huh? just like the guy in the White House right now. And because of that, in a similar way, it generates a lot of noise, meaningless vibrations, vibrations that are not an integral multiple of the keynote or the root of the scale. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you in a minute. First, I just want to give you the concept. In other words, the Western scale is irrational and it generates noise by design. The Vedic scale is rational because it's based on the universal law of the harmonic series and uses whole numbers, integral numbers, so it has integrity. Uh -huh. The same integrity that is found in the vibrations of all things in the universe. So this has much, much deeper roots than the Western imaginary concept. And as a result, 
the healing powers and expressive powers of the music derived from it are vastly beyond the Western scale. So let's do a demonstration and this will allow you to hear it for yourself. What we're going to do is play several intervals, an octave, a fifth, a fourth, and a major third. And first we're going to play them in Western tuning. Then we're going to play them in Vedic tuning, which is also called just intonation. So this will display on your screen and you'll see as it changes from one to the other the difference in the tones. Could you hear that? Most people would probably say no. And there's a good reason for it. We're using pure tones, sine waves. Because these tones don't have any harmonics, they don't give a reliable indication of whether the note is in tune or not. So what we're gonna do now is add some distortion, which increases the higher harmonics of the notes. And then we're going to play the same demonstration again. Check this out. Could you hear that? Especially the last one, the major third. The reason you can hear it is because the higher harmonics generated by the distortion make so much conflict in the equally tempered version, the Western version, that the difference between that and the just intonation of the Vedic scale is very apparent. I could go on and demonstrate the other intervals, but you get the idea, right? So, what's going on here? Well, it has to do with the design of our ears, our hearing system. How does this work? It's very interesting. Within the ear, in the inner ear behind the eardrum, there is a vesicle filled with tiny hairs. And each one of these hairs has its own resonant frequency. You see where I'm going with this? Guess what? The hairs that have integral frequencies are connected through the nervous system. So that when you hear vibrations that have integral frequencies, you get a feeling of pleasure in the hearing sense. This is designed by nature, okay? And it doesn't matter what the root pitch is. And that's why this 532 hertz or 111 hertz or all these other things are garbage. It's not the starting point of the frequency. It's the relation between the frequency of the root and the note of the scale. 
So if this relation can be expressed as a whole number ratio, like 2 to 1, 3 to 2, 4 to 3, and so on, that is what we call in tune. Now, this is very interesting how the ear works. When these little hairs in the ear vibrate according to the sound waves, they also have other hairs that have related frequencies that vibrate in sympathy with them. So guess what? The inner ear performs a mathematical function called frequency subtraction and frequency addition so that if the notes are in tune, the the results of the frequency subtraction and frequency addition will also be in tune with the directly produced notes. So this is designed by nature. This is designed by Shakti, by the goddess. Uh, this is the actual fundaments of music, sound, psychoacoustics, to use the proper name for it. So, because of psychoacoustics, the Vedic scale is the only one that actually follows the design of the human hearing apparatus. This is so interesting. I studied this stuff for years. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, so we use the Vedic tuning in all of our pieces. And hopefully it shows. <laughs> now, the interesting thing, you, did you notice, when you were listening to the tones, it was easier to tell the difference between a Western and Vedic tuning when there are more overtones, more harmonics in the sign. And the reason this is, is that it generates more difference and summation frequencies in the inner ear. So, guess what? Vedic music uses, for example, the sound of the tanpura and the sound of other instruments, they all have the same arrangement of sympathetic strings as the inner ear has with its little hairs, the ciliae. So when the note is in tune, you can hear it by means of the vibrating sympathetic strings and the, the same thing happening in your inner ear. So this is the vast wisdom of Vedic music. This is why it's so great. Now we can derive Western music from Vedic music, but not the other way around. You see, it's just like language. The Western languages are derived from Sanskrit. It's a fact. Sanskrit has 51 letters, and the Western alphabet has like 26, half. So, in the same way, Western music is a derivative of Vedic music, just like Western astrology is a derivative of Vedic astrology. And the original, of course, is much more powerful. So, in the same way, the Vedic music is much more powerful. So, you might say, well, we're going to go into this in the next video with some vocal exercises that you can do to experience these things for yourself. I'm going to provide some backgrounds and like that. But what you can do just for now is that you can, if you have a advanced digital audio workstation software like Logic Pro, for example, you can select on your project preferences the hair mode tuning. I'll show a little video clip of it here. Hair mode tuning is an algorithm that analyzes the directly produced sound and determines the acoustic root and then tunes all the instruments to that root according to just intonation or Vedic scales. This is really cool. Uh, that's why it's worth paying for really professional software. So you can actually make music, even Western style music, using the Vedic tunings if you have the right software. 
And some synthesizers also have alternate scales, and you can tune them in Vedic intonation, which, of course, tremendously increases the benefits of hearing that music. And what are those benefits? It opens the heart. It broadens the mind. It gives increased intelligence, both intellectual and emotional intelligence. It increases memory and ability to uh, feel one's intuition. And gradually, gradually, it moves one towards God because the whole design of the Vedic musical system is simply a mirror of the fundamental cosmic laws of vibration. And this is what is used in the process of creation. So Devi, Shakti, huh, Saraswati, the goddess of music, gives this arrangement in the cosmic laws so that we can know the creator and how the creation is made. And when we bring ourselves into alignment with that law, we attain enlightenment. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.